Good morning viewers, Mike here. Glad you could join me today. Well, let's go ahead and get started on working on this second gear. So back in the 60s, in the Tung Dai shop I worked in, there was this little old Frenchman that uh, worked there. His name is Emo. And I didn't know him very well, but I did get an opportunity later on for a couple months to work with him. He was really, really a good die maker, and I learned a lot from him. Sadly, people didn't really like him very well. They didn't like to work around him. And, I didn't quite understand it. I thought at first that maybe because he was a little bit grumpy, being older, um, but uh, that wasn't the case at all. Come to find out, every day for lunch, Emil brought this mason jar full of beans, um, and it looked like there was you know, two or three different kinds of beans in there, floating in some kind of clear fluid. I assume it was vinegar. And uh, that coupled with the fact that Emil wore this dark charcoal gray long shop coat that uh, probably came within about six inches of the floor. Uh, in the afternoon, about an hour after lunch, I mean, this, this man was walking around in a cloud of methane gas. And uh, I, I could tell then why people didn't run really want to work around him. But I really liked Emil and he was a, a really good uh, tool maker to work for. So rest in peace Emil, you're a good guy. Now this gear is 4140 annealed steel. At the end it'll have uh, heat treatment uh, and we'll put it up to about a 30-35 rockwell. And it's three quarters of an inch thick, four inches, 240 thousandths diameter, and it'll have a 0.875 bore. And the bore will be uh, pretty precise because it will press fit on another pinion shaft and it'll have 46 teeth. The gear you see here now resides in the scrap bin because when I got all the way around instead of 46 teeth I had 45 and a half teeth. Yep, I scrapped it. I totally pooched it. And I was taught that you take when that happens, you take 30 seconds to feel sorry for yourself, and you take another 30 seconds to figure out what you did wrong, and and uh, then once you got that put behind you, you get busy and do what you have to do to fix it. And I know what happened. As I mentioned in an earlier video, I had that sector arm um, problem. But I'm not making excuses. I just blew it. I'll admit, it is kind of humbling to have that happen. Boy, what a rookie. In a second, you'll see that deer in the headlights look. Wait for it. Oh, there it is. What the is going on here? And here's a little shout out to a viewer and a friend of mine. Ken S. And I won't mention his last name because I don't know if he wants me to. But Ken um, 
sent me a message and said he's having good luck with a Harbor Freight needle scaler on getting the old paint off his machines. He has just acquired two machines, a radial drill and a, uh, a bandsaw just like mine, uh, or at least similar. And um, so here I'm trying it, and I'm telling you, it works great. So I just want to give Ken a lot of credit and say thank you very much. Camera work here is terrible. I'm trying to hold the mutual scaler in one hand and the camera in the other. And I'm just all over the place. So that's about all for this one. The next time I see you, I should have that uh, gear remade now for heat treat. So until then, this is Mike signing out.